Next, we're going to look at the properties of graphs of functions. So given the function to the right, where are the zeros for this function? Recall that if we are looking for the zeros of a function, we are trying to find the x values at which f of x or y equals zero. And on this graph, we have three zeros. We see there at x equals negative two, x equals zero, and x equals three. Next, when is this function increasing? When is it decreasing? I've given you a different definition for increasing and decreasing. We see that f of x is increasing if for all x1 less than x2, f of x2 is greater than f of x1. All this means is where the y values of the function get larger, moving from left to right. So for this graph here, we see our function is increasing from negative infinity to wherever that point is, and from this point all the way up to positive infinity, this graph appears to be increasing. So we'll call this x equals a, and this is x equals b. That's the location of those two turning points. So f of x is increasing when x is less than a and when x is greater than b. Recall we can either express this in interval notation or set notation. Again, f of x is decreasing if for all x1 less than x2, f of x2 is less than f of x1. All this means is where the y values of the function get smaller, moving left to right. And we see that in between a and b, the function is decreasing. Where are the turning points for this function? So we're going to define a turning point as a point where the function changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. So on this graph we have two turning points. They are at x equals a and at x equals b. So these two points here and here. Let's look at a few more definitions. Let's start with local maximum and local minimum. When a function changes from increasing to decreasing, sounds just like a turning point, it is called a local maximum. So think if we're going up and then we go back down, so we increase and decrease, that's called a local maximum. And f of x is what we call the local maximum value, or the y value. When f of x changes from decreasing to increasing, it is called a local minimum, and f of x is called the local minimum value. We call these local max and min because they are the highest point within a given interval. The absolute max is the largest value of y, or f of x, which exists over the given interval. And the absolute minimum is the smallest value of y, or f of x, which exists over the given interval. So example one, identify all local and absolute max and min points for the given functions. So let's start with the key points. So starting with the first point on the far left, this is what we're gonna call our absolute minimum. It is the point with the lowest y value, or smallest y value. Next, we have an absolute maximum. It is the point that contains the largest y value. This point is also called the local maximum. Since at that point, we go from increasing to decreasing. 
Next, we have a local minimum. Since the curve changes from decreasing to increasing, and it's not the lowest point, so it's not an absolute minimum. And then finally, we have this point here, which is not a local maximum because it does not change from increasing to decreasing. And it's not an absolute maximum, it is just an end point. So label the second graph on your own, and then check your work. Next up are odd and even functions. So an even function is any function that is symmetric about the y-axis. Algebraically, all even functions have the property that f of negative x equals f of x. So let's look at it graphically first. For example, let's take this point here. That is f at negative 1, which equals negative 3. If we take the symmetrical point on the other side of the y-axis, we see that f of positive 1 is also equal to negative 3. Every x value and its corresponding negative x value will have the same y value. This is what we call an even function. So looking at the graph, we can see that it's a mirror image along the y-axis. What about algebraically? Algebraically, what you can do is you can sub negative x into your function and see what happens. So if I take negative x and square it, and minus 4, negative x times negative x is positive x squared minus 4. And notice that is the same thing as f of x. So what we've shown is that f of negative x is equal to f of x. And this implies that we have an even function. So without graphing it, we can sub in negative x and see if we get back out the original function. From the graph, we just have to look and see if it's symmetrical about the y-axis. Notice cosine is also an even function. If we look at this graph here. We see that is the mirror image of this right here. And that is across the y-axis. If we were to fold that page in half, the one graph would overlap the other. Later on in the course, we'll be able to prove that this is an even function algebraically. So for now, just note that cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. What we could do is graph cosine x and apply the transformation with a k value of negative 1, which would mean a reflection across the y-axis which then we would see is an even function. But the algebraic proof we'll look at later. Next is an odd function. An odd function is any function that has rotational symmetry about the origin. What this means is, so given the odd function here, if I take this half of this graph and I rotate it, 180 degrees, notice I will get this graph here. So you imagine rotating that 180 degrees counterclockwise, we will get the same image that we see in red. So that is called an odd function. And the property of an odd function is that f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. So for example, let's take the graph again. If I take the f of this point here, f of negative 1, we see that's equal to 2. Then taking this point over here, f of 1, we see that's equal to negative 2. So if I was to multiply f of 1 by negative 1, I would get back positive 2, which would make it the same as this one here. How do you prove this algebraically? Well, same as above, we sub in negative x to our function. So this time I get negative x cubed minus 3 times negative x. And what that gives me is negative x cubed, a negative x times a negative x times a negative x. 
Negative 3 times negative x is positive 3x. That's f of negative x. Now I need to check that it is the same as negative f of x. So I take the negative of f of x. Remember, f of x is given right here. So that's the negative of x cubed minus 3x, which gives me negative x cubed plus 3x. And we now see that this and this are the same. And we've proven that f of negative x is equal to the negative of f of x, which implies we have an odd function, and therefore it has rotational symmetry about the origin. Again, we can see this in sine of x. Sine of x is an odd function. So if I took this portion of the graph, and I rotated it 180 degrees, I would get this graph. So that makes this an odd function. The algebraic proof to show that sine negative x equals negative sine of x will be looked at later. So for this section, here are some questions from your book. There's also a handout sheet as well. For question 10, some of your textbooks have the wrong intervals. You should have negative infinity to 2 and not negative infinity to negative 2. You'll understand once you look at the question.